from the Hebrew and the Greek. So what happened? If it's the word of God, why would those contradictions be there? Well, it's a little bit simple. They didn't have Xerox copiers in those days. They didn't have computers. They had to copy them by hand. And copyists sometimes made mistakes. And I think our brothers in Islam will agree with that. In the genealogy, in Matthew and Luke, in Matthew it gives Joseph's genealogy, and in Luke it gives Mary's genealogy. In the, the, the temple in Jerusalem, if there had been anything wrong with, I'm running out of time. <laughs> If there had been anything wrong with the genealogy of Christ, they would have pointed it out immediately, but they did not. This book is a book of history. It tells the given account of thousands of details concerning towns and people, and not one spade full of archaeological dirt has ever disproved one single word in it millions of tons of dirt and ruins have been removed and not one single, single archaeological spade has ever disproved one word in it. Secondly, it's a book of prophecies, thousands and thousands of prophecies, and they come true. I want to close with this one thing. I've got about three minutes. And I only got about a third of what I was trying to say. I'd never met this man before this evening. I read his little book that he wrote. And Mr. D. Dot, I will admit, I, I was a little bit taken aback. I expected a little more courtesy, and I, I don't mean our meeting today, I mean the little booklet. And I was grieved inside. Saturday night I went to our church to pray, and I started to pray about this meeting. And uh, I believe the Lord spoke to my heart, and you're older than I am, and I will show you the respect that your age and your scholarship most definitely and certainly deserves. The Lord, I believe, spoke to my heart and said, you tell this distinguished gentleman this. There was another man 2,000 years ago, Saul of Tarsus who didn't like Christians. And I think you know the story. Saul met Jesus on the road to Damascus as one out of due time. And Jesus asked him, why do you kick against the goads? And I believe our Heavenly Father Ask me to ask you, why do you, and I say it with reverence and respect, kick against the greatest prophet, the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, you tell Mr. Didot if it was God that spoke to me. I love him very, very much for I am a God of love. And tell him if he will give his heart to me, I will fill the loneliness and the ache and the void within his heart. And I will give him a love for the Muslim people that he has never known before in all of his life. And I'll close this little one-third finished statement by saying, we love you, and God loves you, and God bless you.
And now, Brother Ahmed Didat. الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فويل للذين يكتبون الكتاب بأيديهم ثم يقولون هذا من عند الله ليشتروا به ثمنا قليلا وويل لهم مما كتبت أيديهم وويل لهم مما يكسبون صدق الله صدق الله الرزيم مستر شيرمان and brethren Though I wanted to go straight into the subject, the plea that Brother Swaggart had made forces me to make a confession of faith. And that is that we Muslims happen to be the, of the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith for its followers to believe in Jesus. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. We believe that Jesus Christ was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe we believe that he was the Messiah. We believe in his miraculous birth, which many modern-day Christians reject today. We believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. We are going together. The only parting of the ways, the only real difference between the Muslim and the Christian is that we say that he is not God Almighty in human form, he is not God incarnate, and he is not the begotten son of God. Metaphorically, we are all the children of God, the good and the bad. And Jesus would be closer to being the Son of God than any one of us because he would be more faithful to God than any of us can ever be. From that point of view, we would agree that he is most preeminently the Son of God. But not as the Christians say that he is the only begotten Son, begotten, not made, not in that sense. Coming to the subject, the subject is, is the Bible God's word? And Brother Swagat has given us to understand that translations and versions are one and the same thing. We Muslims, we have a number of translations of the Quran even into the English language. Different people, Yusuf Ali, Mamiduk Pikthol, you know, Darya Badi, and so on and on. We have English translations by different people. And there, the translation means a difference in the choice of words. Choice of words in translating a certain phrase from Arabic into English. Choice of words. Versions are quite a different thing. Look, here, I have in my hand this Bible, which Brother Swagat, as well as many Protestants, do not accept as the Word of God. This is the Roman Catholic version of the Bible, the Douay or Reims version of the Bible. This Bible has 73 books. This is an encyclopedia of 73 books, seven more than one uh, which Brother Swagat takes oath on. The King James Version. This is the King James Version. He takes oath by it. In his Evangelist magazine, December 1985, somebody questions Brother Swagat about the Bible being the Word of God. And he says, Word of God, and in bracket, I refer to the King James Version. In your Evangelist of December 85, the King James Version. The King James Version has thrown out those seven extra books thrown out. In other words, those seven extra books, the, Christ, the Protestants do not ex 